Well, hi again, everyone. This is Tim from Cleveland Baseball Fan 879. And no, I do not have a game today, but uh, thankfully the uh, 2007 Cleveland Indians Stratomatic Advanced, well, mostly advanced replay has come to an end. Uh, it was a over two year project. Uh, there were some other things that happened. Uh, I was also doing the Mike McCormick replay. I was also doing, uh, I did the 1971 and 2016 World Series. So the McCormick replay was 35 starts. And I, there was a time where I just took a month off as well. Uh, I'll give the exact start date of this. I know it was in 2021. Let's see. Sorry if there's going to be a little sound here. Okay, so the first video was done June 17th of 2021. So this took uh, just short of, or just over 14 months to do. So thank you for everyone who stuck through this. And now I will go ahead and give the stats, and we'll start with the pitching. And we'll start with Paul Bird. I'm going to go every single player, so this might get a little tedious, but we'll, we'll try to make it exciting. So Paul Bird on the regular season went 15-8, and eight, had a 4.59 ERA, in 192 innings pitched, walked 28, struck out 88. Uh, not so good on my replay. Five wins, 12 losses, 157 innings pitched, so way off on the innings. Uh, 86 earned runs allowed. They don't have what they're... Let me see if I can pull up Paul Bird's actual earned runs allowed. Paul Bird actually allowed 73 earned runs in the real season. Uh, it was just under in walks, way under in strikeouts, and yeah, about a half a run off in ERA. All right, Cliff Lee, who spent the start of the season starting and then uh, came in in relief. Uh, on, the, on the replay, five wins, nine losses, 92 and two-thirds innings pitched, 52 earned runs allowed, 29 walks, 49 strikeouts, and a 5.05 ERA. Uh, on the re on the real season, he was five and eight, a 6.29 ERA, 97 innings pitched, uh, walked 36, so walked a little bit less, struck out way less, and he struck out 66 on the season. All right, Jeremy Sowers spent the early part of the season uh, with the Indians and then made a start late. So Jeremy on the season, one win and six losses uh, in 13 starts, 67 innings pitched, uh, 21 walks, 24 strikeouts, and a 6.42 ERA on the real season. On the replay, he was three wins, five losses, 66 and, two -third, 66 and a third innings pitched. <clears throat> Excuse me. So came really close on his innings pitched. Um Let's see, 43, they don't have their own runs. So 16 walks compared to 21, and 22 strikeouts compared to 24, and about a, yeah, a little over half a run less, so 5.83 compared to 6.42. CC Sabathia. Uh, did not, he was uh, on the replay, 15 and 8, 229 innings pitched. 33 walks, 198 strikeouts, and a 3.10 ERA on the real season. 19 and 7, 241 innings pitched, 37 walks, 209 strikeouts, and a 3.21 ERA. The pitcher, formerly known as Fausto Carmona, in the real season went 19 and 8, uh, 215 innings pitched, 61 walks, 137 strikeouts, and a 3.06 ERA. Uh, on this replay, he was 16 and 9, 197, and a third innings pitched. Uh, seven, uh, gave up 72 in runs, walked 56, so a little less. 131 strikeouts, so yeah, right about there. And about two tenths of a run higher at 
Uh, Jake Westbrook overperformed on his replay. Uh, nine wins, eight losses, 132 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, 42 walks, 180... Sorry, 42 walks, 85 strikeouts, and a 4.41 ERA. On the regular season, six wins, nine losses, 152 innings pitched, 55 walks compared to 42, 93 strikeouts compared to 85, and the ERA was real close, 4.32 on the real season compared to 4.41. All right, Aaron Laffey, who came on about midway through the season, uh, Laffey on the... Regular season, four wins, two losses, 49 innings pitched, uh, walked 12, struck out 25, and had a 4.56 ERA. On my replay, one win, three losses, 45 and two-thirds innings pitched, uh, 15 walks, about the same, and dead on with the 25 strikeouts. And it's about the same, 4.73 compared to 4.56. All right, we'll go to the bullpen. Uh, we'll start with Tom Masney, who, yes, I used him way too much. Uh, on the real season, 58 innings pitched, 7-2 uh, and two record, 32 walks, 52 strikeouts, and a uh, 4.68 ERA. <clears throat> Move this up over, so I'm looking right into the camera. Excuse me. All right. On the real season, Masney, three wins, two losses, 65 and a third innings pitched, 38 walks, 26, uh, 38 earned runs allowed, 26 walks, 47 strikeouts. So, yeah, close enough. And a 5.23 ERA, so about a half, about six tenths of a run higher. All right, Aaron Fultz uh, on the replay, one win, one loss, 40 innings pitched. 14 are runs allowed, 12 walks, 32 strikeouts, and a 3.15 ERA. On the real season, four wins, three losses, uh, 37 innings pitched, 16 walks, so four higher. Uh, struck out more because he pitched more innings, so that's negligible. And a three point and a three 2.92 ERA on the regular season. Rafael Perez was really good, and then he did have his kind of, sort of high spots here. Uh, he did give up a lot more runs. So, Rafael on the replay, no wins, one loss, 62 and a third innings pitched, 23 earned runs, 12 walks, 67 strikeouts, a save, and a 3.32 ERA on the real season. One win, two losses, uh, 61 innings pitched, uh, 15 walks, so a little bit higher on the walks in the regular season. 62 strikeouts, so I had a little bit more. Uh, did have the one save, which is why I used him in the final game. Rafael Betancourt. On the real season, 79 innings pitched, 5 wins, 1 loss, 9 walks, 80 strikeouts, and a 1.47 ERA with 3 saves. On my replay, 3 wins, 6 losses, 81 innings pitched, uh, six walks. That's really good in 81 innings. Uh, 70 strikeouts, yeah, about 10 less, and a 2.00 ERA. Uh, Jensen Lewis came up about midway through the season. Uh, two wins on the replay. Two wins, no losses, 30 innings pitched, 11 earned runs, six walks, 22 strikeouts, and a 3.30 ERA. On the real season, uh, one win, one loss, uh, 29 innings pitched, 10 walks, so a little bit more walks, 34 strikeouts, struck out a lot more, and a 2.15 ERA. Uh, Roberto Hernandez, the former uh, White Sox reliever, did not, was released during the season. Uh, actually, he went over to the Dodgers for Roberto Perez, Roberto Hernandez. As a member of the Indians, was uh, three wins, one loss, twenty-six innings pitched, twenty-one earned runs, or tw or eighteen earned runs. Sorry, uh, sixteen walks and eighteen strikeouts. On the 
replay. 22 in the third innings pitched 0 and 1. 13 earned runs allowed, 14 walks, 16 strikeouts, one save, and a 5.24 ERA. Uh, Hernandez had a 6.23 ERA with the Indians. And finally, the last of my carded players is Joe Borowski. <sighs> Joe had a rough season. Uh, on the real season, he was four wins, five losses, 66 innings pitched, uh, 17 walks, 58 strikeouts, 45 saves, and a 5.07 ERA. I only had him in 37 save opportunities. That's the one thing that I'm kind of yeah, about is trying to get save situations, get within three runs. It's either a blowout or real close or none of the above, and then uh, Borowski ends up getting more wins than he does save. He blew 13 saves on the replay and only had 24 saves. Uh, eight wins and three losses, 53 innings pitched. So I was way under on the on the innings pitched. Uh, 37 earned runs, six walks, 30, 42 strikeouts, and a 6.28 ERA. Uh, Edward Mujica is... Next, actually, we're going to go Jason Stanford next because he actually had some starts. So Jason Stanford on my replay only made two appearances. Actually, no, I made, uh, sorry, I made 11 appearances. Uh, one win, one loss, 29 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, eight walks, 21 strikeouts, and a 3.34 ERA. Uh, Stanford on the regular season, one win, one loss, 26 and a third innings pitched, so a little bit over, uh, 14 earned runs, so a little bit higher on the real one, uh, seven walks, so it was a walk over, and 16 strikeouts. All right. Next is Edward Mujica. Uh, had a little bit of a call up, and then uh, the Indians decided to shut him down. Uh, on the replay, 16 and two thirds innings pitched, no wins, one loss, uh, 12 earned runs, three walks, 10 strikeouts, and a 6.48 ERA. Uh, Mujica on the real season for the Indians, 13 innings pitched, no record. Uh, 12 earned runs, two walks, seven strikeouts, and an 8.31 ERA. Uh, Mike Rouse threw two innings, didn't give up a run, and struck somebody out. And he was my sort of blowout pitcher. Uh, I do not see him having any pitching stats, but he was my designated person to pitch. Uh, Juan Lara was a uh, September call-up. Uh, Two-thirds of an innings pitched. Uh, two, uh, two earned runs, three strikeouts, one walk. Uh, was Had only uh, one and a third innings pitched, two earned runs. Kind of negligible. Same with Matt Miller. Uh, Miller, one inning pitched, through an inning. All right, Mike Koplove threw five innings. He threw six in the regular season, so I could have thrown him another inning if I really needed to. Uh, three earned runs, one walk, one strikeout, a 5.40 ERA. Uh, had a six ERA with four earned runs and six innings. Uh, two walks and four strikeouts, so... Uh, let's see who else. So there were two other pitchers released during the season. Jason Davis, I believe, went to Seattle. Uh, Davis went 11 and a third innings pitched with the Indians. Uh, 
had gave up six earned runs, walked nine, struck out five, and had a 4.76 ERA. I had him also for 11 and a third innings pitched. Uh, four, I had him at four earned runs, six walks. Yeah, a little bit less. Uh, six strikeouts, which is yeah, about one above, and a 3.18 ERA. So I had him a little bit better than that. And finally, Fernando Cabrera, which I completely overused because I used his total card instead of what he actually pitched for the Indians. Uh, for the Indians, he only had 33 and two-thirds innings pitched. I pitched him his whole 44 innings. So two and three record. He had a four and two record with... No, sorry, let me look up that. Again. Sorry, one and two record. 33 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, 21 earned runs compared to 30. Uh, 35 walks compared to 22. And 39 stri strikeouts compared to 34. Th the first stats were the real stats and then the real stats. Okay, now let's move on to the hitting stats. And we'll start with our leadoff hitter, Grady Sizemore. Grady on the season. And I'll just do uh, the major stats. Uh, 270 on the replay, 270 average, 19 homers, 67 RBIs, 70 stolen bases, and 36 doubles. On the real season, he was 277, 34 doubles. I had eight triples in the in the replay, had five on the real season. Uh, 24 homers in the regular season compared to uh, 19 in the replay, and then 78 RBIs in the real season. Uh, walked 101 times in the real season, walked 97 times in the replay. Uh, struck out 155 times in the real season, only 145 in my replay. So, up next is as Drubal Cabrera, uh, as a I think he came up in early August, which took over for a struggling Josh Barfield. Uh, two on the replay, two sixty five average, three homers, nine RBIs. Yeah, two sixty two eighty three average on the real season, nine doubles, a ten on in the replay. Uh, three triples on the replay, two triples in real life, three homers matched, uh, but 22 RBIs on the real season. Wow. Uh, both had 17 walks, uh, struck out 29 times in the real season, 23 times in the replay. All right, then Travis Hafner, the, one of the bigger, disapp uh, big, bigger disappointments compared to uh, Paul Bird. We'll say probably the biggest disappointment when it comes to the, hit, the position players. On the replay, 235 average, 31 homers, and 90 RBIs. Uh, a little low on the average. He was 266 in the regular season. Way out homered. Uh, only at 24 in the regular season, but didn't drive in as many runs. Uh, 90 in the replay compared to 100. I mean, that's all comparison of, well, what's the situation when you come up? So, uh, let's see. Walked 102 times in the replay. In the real season, only walked 78 times in this, so he, his on-base percentage probably wasn't as good. 115 strikeouts for both, so you can call it what you will. Uh, the stolen bases are kind of going to be negligible for anybody other than Grady Sizemore, uh, Franklin Gutierrez, Johnny Peralta, I think, had one because of a double steal. I didn't double steal a lot, so. We'll move to Ryan Garko. On the replay, 268 average, 21 homers, 62 RBIs. On the real season, 289 average, uh, 21 homers. So dead on. And 62 RBIs in the replay compared to 61. So, okay, walked 34 times in the real season, walked 32 times. Uh, struck out 94 times on the real season, only struck out 77 in the replay. So. Held that part down. Franklin Gutierrez, uh, also a, I'd say came up in July and was a big help compared to Trot Nixon. Uh, 266 average on the real season, 13 homers, 36 RBIs. 
264 average on the replay, tw hit 20 homers, and had 52 RBIs. Uh, Casey Blake played the majority of the time at third base. On the, we'll go with the real season stats first. 270 average, 36 doubles. Wow. Uh, four triples, 18 homers, 78 RBIs. On the replay, he was 261, hits 261, had 22 homers, so a little bit higher on the home run projection, and just a smidge off on the RBI, 76 compared to 78. And now the offensive MVP is Victor Martinez. And timeout as my internet kind of went out. Okay, I'm hoping this is going to be the last of the interruptions, but I don't know. All right, so Victor Martinez, the MVP of the, I guess we'll say the whole team, on the replay, 307 average, 35 homers, 114 RBIs. Uh, the 114 RBIs actually match what he got in the real season, 307 average on the replay compared to 301. So it's about one or two more hits, I would, or maybe more than that. Maybe somebody can do the math on that. Uh, 40 doubles on the real season. 41 on the replay. No triples on the regular season, but hit three in the replay. Uh, only walked half the time. He had tw had 62 walks. Uh, had 31. I wonder how many of those were intentional that I didn't do. Uh, also cut the strikeouts down by about 11. Had 76 on the real season and, 70, and had uh, 65 in the replay. So Victor Martinez somehow matched his RBI total. Amazing. Uh, let's go with Trot Nixon next. Actually, let's go Johnny Peralta next. Sorry, we're going to go with Johnny Peralta. Johnny on the real season, 270 average, 21 homers, 72 RBIs. On the replay, 243 average. So you're going to see this and some of the averages dip a little bit. 24 homers, 75 RBIs, uh, had 574 at-bats, I had for 563, so he had hit home runs with less. Uh, yeah, so Trout Nixon do, is up now. Uh, on the real season, 251 average, 3 homers, 31 RBIs. On the regular season, 293 average, 4 homers, 22 RBIs. Uh, Kelly Shopik, it was my biggest disappointment, and I'd love to show you like the reverse side of this card, but I can't. Um, it is very three column heavy, and it's only home runs. And for a two, 261 hitter, that's got to be spread out a lot more. So that was one of my bigger pet peeves with this card. Like, you only have one something for the three column. I'd rather <laughs> spread that out and have it be in the one through that. On the real season, Shopik hit 261 with seven homers and 30 RBIs. 174 on the replay with eight homers and 22 RBIs. Just didn't enjoy when he had to play. It was either hit the three column or it was not, or you better pray it was off the pitcher card. Uh, Jason Michaels also a bit of a disappointment in the replay. 236 average on the replay, seven homers, 34 RBIs. On the real season, 270 average, 7 homers, 39 RBIs. Uh, Josh Barfield. On the replay, 257 average, 2 homers, 28 RBIs, and had 14 stolen bases. I only had him for 2 stolen bases. Uh, on the real season, he was 243 Three homers, 50 RBI, so not even close to the RBI production. Uh, Andy Marte, who I didn't realize, unfortunately, is now passed on. So, RIP Andy Marte. On the real season, 193 average, one homer, eight RBIs. 174 average on the replay, no homers, one RBI. Uh, David DeLucci uh, actually had a little bit better average on the replay. 264 average on the replay, two homers, 22 RBIs, and spoiler alert, he has something to do with the decision in the final game if you have not watched. 
230 average on the real season, four homers, 20 RBIs. Uh, ben Francisco in limited duty on the replay two on the yeah on the replay two twenty average three homers six RBIs on the real season two seventy four in sixty two at bats I'm at fifty nine at bats uh, three homers and twelve RBIs and Mike Rouse will end the um, the full season with the team. Yeah, uh, the only, only reason he was kept around was because of speed and he could play defense a little bit. A little bit. A four range is not very good, but he didn't play that much. On the real season, 119 average and 67 at-bats, no homers, four RBIs. I am at 158 with no homers and one RBI. All right, and then the final, starting with the final four players who either were uncarded or didn't spend the whole season with the Indians. Uh, Chris Gomez on the replay for the Indians batted 280 with no homers and seven RBIs. Uh, Gomez for the Indians hit 283 with no homers and five RBIs. Kenny Lofton is a member of the Indians. Uh, hit 283 on the real season. No homers and uh, 15 RBIs. Uh, on the replay, 304 average, two homers and 19 RBIs. Uh, Luis Rivas, uh, six hits and 13 at bats, had the one home run and, and an RBI. Uh, Rivas had 11 ABs, had the one homer, four RBIs, and 273 average. And finally, he came up for a cup of coffee, and you'll probably see him again in uh, RJL's replay. Shin Su Chu, which I believe it was his rookie season. Had... Six hits in 11 at bats, 545 average, no homers, one RBI. Uh, Chu hit 294, had five hits and 20 at uh, and, uh, in 17 at bats, and no homers and no RBIs. All right, now for the, the moment you've all been waiting for playoffs and the matchups. So we'll start with the American League. The winners of the divisions are, well, of course, the Cleveland Indians at 80 and 82. The Oakland Athletics won the American League West at 87 and 85. And the Boston Red Sox won the division at 98 and 64. Uh, the Yankees were the wild card at 93 and 69. Uh, they finished a lot better. The Blue Jays gave them a race late, but the Blue Jays could not hang on. All right, I will give, quickly give the um, standings in the American League. Uh, Red Sox finished two games better than they did in the regular season. Uh, the Yankees were only a game off, 93-69 and 69 compared to 94-68. and 68. Uh, The Blue Jays were six games better the, on the replay. On the real season, they were 83 and 79. On the on the hyper fast scoring, they were 83 and 89 and 73. The Orioles are way overperformed. They only won 69 games in the regular season. They won 84 in this replay. Uh, this will have to do because the Central Division was way down, so they got a lot of wins against the Central. And the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, who the next season would go on to be the American League representative in the World Series. Won nine more games. They only won 66 games in the real season. Won 75 here. Uh, the Indians, 80 wins, won the division. 96 wins in real life. The Tigers, 78 wins. They won 88. The Twins were only two games under what they were. They won 79 games in the real, real season. 77 here. Uh, the White Sox were a game off. They were 72 and 90 in the real season. 71 and 91. And the Royals were two games better as well, 71 and 91. And 
uh, 69 and 93 in the real season. Uh, in the NL West, wow, this was a big shocker. Anaheim was 80 and 82. They won this division in real life, winning 94 games. Boy, it was hard to be them. Mariners were, had 88 wins in the real season, only 78. The A's, 76 wins. I guess they lost some close games, and they won 87. And the Rangers, who I thought weren't the greatest team, just the way I played them, won 75 games in the real season, only won 65 in, in, the, in the replay. And now we go to the National League, where the Cubs won the division and won a lot more games than what they really did. They went 98 and 64. They only went 85 and 77. They held off the Brewers, who won 83 games. Uh, they only won 80. Uh, the Cardinals did finish under 500 in the real season. They were 78 and 84 in the real season, 74 and 88. Uh, the Astros, 73 and 89 in the real season, 75 and 87. The Cincinnati Reds held on until the final weekend in the wild card race. They finished four games over 500, 83 and 79. They were 72 and 90. So I must have been some good juju for them rolling. And then the Pirates were 68 and 94 in the real season. Same in, in the, on the simulation board. All right, and they will face... Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and go through the divisions, and I'll give you the matchups. Uh, in the NL East, the New York Mets. Yes, they blew a lead late in the season to lose a division to the Phillies. No such uh, worry this time. They had the division wrapped up uh, officially by about mid-September. 91-71 and 71 record. They went 88-74, and 74, so three games higher. Uh, the Phillies were 83-79. and 79. Uh, six games difference. Braves were 84 and 78. One game better. There's 85 and 77. Heavy, Hold on. There's heavy duty DNA. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, Nationals were 73 and 89. Same record. Uh, replay and uh, simulation. And the Marlins were 79 and 83. They were eight games better than their uh, real season. And the National League West. There will not be a game 163. So this you'll have to adjust this for kind of regular season. So if the if you would count 162 games, the Rockies and the Diamondbacks would have been 89 and 73. But in this replay, the Diamondbacks were 10 games under 500. So they were a bit of a surprise, which is why Kurt Gibson won manager of the year. Uh, 76 and 86, they were 90 and 72. Uh, Dodgers won the division at 91 and 71. Oops, they were 82 and 80. Sorry. Um, yeah, the Rockies were 87 and 75. They were the wild card winner. Padres 82 and 80, so a little bit of a dip. And the Giants finished 81 and 81. They were 10, that's 10 games better than what they did in the real season. So your playoff matchups, and a little bit different. We'll start in the American League because the rule was not changed to not have the uh, division winner play the wild card. The number two seed, the Oakland A's, will face the wild card New York Yankees and your division series matchup, which was your LCS matchup, the Red Sox and the Indians in a best of five. Now your uh, national league playoffs, you had the Cubs will take the number one seed 98 and 64. They'll play the Rockies in the first round in the division series and the Dodgers and the Mets tied at 91 and 71, but the Dodgers won seven of 10 matchups. So they will get the home field and play each other. All right, everybody. Thank you for sticking through this. Uh, it was a long project, but in the end, I'm glad I got it done. Uh, thank you for all the well wishes that I've gotten over the last couple of days. Uh, 
just it's been great to kind of push me across. Also, having a week off of work doesn't hurt as well. So, all right. Uh, hopefully in a couple days I'll get the the teams that didn't make the playoffs their playoff roster set and maybe by the end of the week I will end of the week or beginning of next week I'll get the playoffs started and get the rest of this show on the road and on that note uh, please leave a like uh, leave a comment if you would like to and if you have not already subscribed hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new videos and whatever games you are playing please enjoy them to your fullest have a Good night, everybody.